All right, this is the notes for H2C, which is really a review lesson. I don't have anything new to teach you in this lesson, but I thought we should do one more example of the four-step process uh, for making a confidence interval. And the reason I thought this is a good idea is partly people asked me that last year, can we please do one more example? And partly because um, on an AP test, it's really common to have a question and the short little bit of information and then a long page of blankness that should be your clue that you're going to do four steps. They do not necessarily tell you part A, state the thing, part B, check the conditions. They won't tell you to do the four steps. So we're going to practice doing the four steps um, just as an example, just to make sure. So um, this is kind of a fun example. Uh, somebody was studying college students and couples that were kissing on campus. And that's kind of a fun little, um, fun little context, don't you think? Remember back before COVID when we could walk around the campus and kiss people if we wanted to? Or hug people? I don't know. Anyway, this particular person was studying whether the couple, this is a silly thing, and you're going to get distracted by it, but I'm going to say it anyway, whether the couple tilts their head to the right or to the left when they kiss. Because you know if you don't tilt, you're going to crash noses. So just, you know, think about that for a minute. You can pause while you, like, experiment with the mirror if you want to. But do they tilt to the right or to the left? And every year when I do this in class, people, people have to, like, oh, wait a minute. Which one do I do? And I find this is just in case, you know, I hope this isn't too much information for you, but I tend to tilt to the right. But when I hug people, I tend to tilt to the left, and I don't know why. So I don't have a good reason for that, but you know, think about it for a minute just for fun. Um, so anyway, get yourself undistracted by that. Pause the video until you're ready, if you need to. Um, but then we're, we're going to say these people took a random sample, because they really wanted to know, right, of couples they spotted around campus. And they found 124 couples to use for their random sample. And they found out of those 83 of those, they basically just watched them kiss and noticed which way they tilted. They didn't interview them or anything. They just watched. That's kind of creepy. 83 of them were tilting to the right as they kissed. All right. So here's, a, here's where, if this was an AP problem, they would say, find a confidence interval. And then they would give you this big blank page. We're going to do all of that, but we're going to keep in mind that they're never going to want you to just do the calculations. They're going to always want you to do the four steps. So we're going to do all four steps. One more example, just to be sure. State. So what are we supposed to state? So grab your handy dandy chart that you just made, right? It says we're supposed to state the, con the um, name of the, no, not yet. That's the plan stage. So the state stage, we're supposed to say the parameter and the context and the confidence level. Okay, so what is it we want to estimate? We want to estimate, if you're not sure, start with estimate the true proportion. of who's our population? Our population is college-age couples that happen to be kissing in public. Yeah, I'm not going to write all of that. College-age couples who, what about them? So we've got the population, and we need to know what it is that we're calling a success. In this case, success, apparently, is tilting to the right. Tilt their heads to the right to avoid smashing noses while kissing. There we go. I told you it was a cute, um, funny context, but there we go. So one more thing. We're supposed to also say our confidence level. So I'm going to say with 90. Oh, they didn't tell me which one to use. Oh, gosh, I'm going to use 95%. If you're not sure, use 95%. But you're supposed to say in advance, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to estimate this, and I'm going to use this confidence level. Okay, state is pretty easy, shouldn't take you long. Plan. What are we supposed to do for the plan? Well, it says we're supposed to name the procedure and check our conditions. So name and conditions. Um, the name of this is a confidence interval for proportions. You are welcome to abbreviate it as CI for proportions. Or you can do like the book does and say it's a one sample Z interval for proportions, whatever. So that's our name. 
And then we've got our conditions. We're going to do the random and the normal and the independent all in a row. And I'm not going to just write R and I. I'm just using that as a hint for you. But you should be writing random. And you should be saying to yourself, gee, I wonder if it's random. And you go look to make sure. Because it's possible that sometime on a quiz, I will give you one that's not random. And you would hopefully notice that, right? And you would say, no, not random, but we'll continue anyway or something like that. So I see that it says it's a random sample. So I can say yes, given. By the way, if I were taking the AP test, I would literally do what I just did. I would circle the word random and put an arrow to prove that I found that word. That's what I would do. Um, N is for normal. I guess you can't do that in a Canvas test, can you? Sorry, you'll just have to say yes, it's given. Normal, how do I check normality? Um, well, that's that NP thing, isn't it? So I'm pretty sure that's going to be normal. Um, in fact, I can tell that 83 is big enough. I could do 124 minus 83, and that's also going to be big enough. I'm going to go ahead and start with yes, because I can tell just by thinking about it that it's going to work. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say NP hat, show some work so that you know, so I know what you're doing. I know that you know what you're doing. 124 is N, P hat is 83 over 124. Like we talked about before, these cancel. And if you picked up your calculator, you're putting too much work into it. That's 10, greater than 10, yes. And Q hat is 124 times, okay, here's where I might need my calculator because 124 minus 83. That's the people that tilted to the left. There were 41 of them out of 124. And that also can just cancel and become 41. Okay, so those are both big enough that we can assume the sampling distribution is approximately normal because of this. By the way, you could get away with checking only one of these if you choose the smaller one. So you could have said to yourself, oh gee, I'm gonna check this smaller one and make sure it's big enough. And then if this one's big enough, then I know that this one will be big enough. So if you put a little comment of NQ is this big and NP must be bigger than that, that's also fine. Or if, you're, if you just wanna be a perfectionist, do them both, that's fine. Either way, independent. However, it doesn't work to check just NP because then NQ still might be too small. So random, normal, independent. Is it independent? I want to know, is 124 likely to be less than 10% of all the college-age couples? Um, maybe not on that campus, but all college-age couples in general, sure, certainly less. So I'm going to say yes, 124 is less than or equal to 10% of all college age couples. Um, and remember, I'm pickier about this than some teachers. I require the number and the context, the name of the population. If you just say yes and is less than 10%, that is not good enough for me because I don't know if you thought about it. So put the number, put the population so that I know that you thought about whether this is true or not. Yes, I'm being picky, and some of you lost a point or two on the last quiz because you didn't, you weren't specific enough. Oh, so sad. Number three, we're gonna do next. And here's where my advice to you is plug all the numbers in the formula and then pick up your calculator because we're gonna prove that we know the formula for a confidence interval for proportions. You can write it with variables or not. The, the numbers are the important part. So I'm gonna start with what goes before the P, what goes before the plus or minus? That's P hat, which is 83 out of 124. Plus or minus Z star. I don't have to show the work on finding Z star because 95%, I know Z star. I can just say Z star is uh, 1.96 and I have that one memorized. And if you needed to look it up with the inverse norm thing, that's fine. And then I'm going to do this P hat Q hat over N. That's the 124 is N. This is 83 out of 124, and this is, we already calculated it, it's 41 out of 124. I actually kind of like writing in fractions, even though that's messy, because I don't have to pick up my calculator yet. I mean, eventually I'm going to find p hat, right? But not yet. So this is the minimum amount of work I would expect you to show, is the numbers plugged into the formula. And then you have permission to pick up your calculator and do the shortcut, which is that tests, it's um, down here to letter A, like we talked about in the last set of notes, one proportion Z int. I have to put my X and my N, that's the 83 
and the 124, and my confidence level is now 0 0.95. That's all I have to tell the calculator. It will do the rest, and it gives me my interval, which is 0.58. Let's round up to 7 and 0.752. Okay, and then I conclude. This is where I write my interpretation. So I'm going to say we are 95% confident. Here's another spot where you might want to pause and try to write this by yourself without my help, if you could. Um, I'm confident that the true proportion of all college age is between these two numbers. So I'm going to actually put the interval first and say between that between 58.7%. I like to change them to percents because it makes more sense in my sentence. Um, and 75.2% of all college age, here's the context, couples. What about them? They tilt their heads to the right. To the right when kissing. So here's another word of advice. The context should appear twice. The context should always appear in the state and then be repeated in the conclude. So it's kind of like writing an essay with a good topic sentence at the beginning and a good concluding sentence at the end. You want your audience to know what you're going to do before you do it. And then you do it. And then you remind them, this is what I just did. So those, that concept that you probably learned in English class is coming back in this class. So there's one more example of four complete steps done well with the work shown and the con the conclusion. And then, you know, if they asked me to, I would do the level also, say 95% of all the intervals would capture this true proportion of people who tilt to the right. I'm not going to write that. You can if you want. All right, that is it. There is a quiz tomorrow, which is Wednesday. And not tomorrow, but you know, Wednesday there's a quiz and good luck on it. I think you'll be fine actually.